Hello. It has arrived. The BB-23 cast was dropped yesterday. And I spent most of yesterday finding out everything I could about them. Get, gathering my thoughts. Trying to get a feel for people. And uh, I've got a pretty decent sized list of things that I want to talk about. I got a whole memo in my phone for it. Well, before I start talking about the cast, I want to address some of the twists because I haven't really addressed those. I haven't streamed about them. But, um, but yeah, there is a team twist, as we all know. And in all honesty, when I first heard that, my heart sank. Okay? It just fell out of me. I had to put it back. <laughs> Just because, like, we're in the groupthink era of Big Brother, and I was just worried that two of these teams would team up, and they would just be the Super Alliance. Hello to my first viewer. Thank you for being here. Um, but some people have come forth and talked about the ways that it could work, and I became a little more, I don't want to say more hopeful, but maybe less suicidal about it. You know, I wasn't just, like, all scorched earth with it. But I realized that it would really come down to the cast. As to whether or not it would truly work. And then when the cast dropped, I felt a lot of hope, actually. Because they did follow through with their 50% people of color promise. Yeah, Big Brother did the unexpected. It did what it promised. <laughs> That's expecting the unexpected right there. <laughs> Which is a, a sad statement of facts, I think. By the way, just water today. But yes, we met the cast. It is 16 people. And it is very racially diverse, but I wish it was a little more age diverse. The oldest one is only 40. So it's just like BB-20. Steve, the first one out, he was the oldest. BB-20 was my dad's first season of Big Brother. And he pointed out that the oldest person this season is still young enough to be my son. Yeah. But I don't know if that's ever really going to change. Like, even when they do get older people, they tend to not do much. I mean, Cliff went far, but... And I don't think he was a horrible player, but he definitely made some mistakes along the way. But yes, enough about that. Let's just get into the BB-23 cast. Um... I'm just going to go in alphabetical order, obviously. So, we're going to start off with Alyssa. Now, when I read her bio, I got a lot of influencer vibes. And, like, I'm just a little unsure about her because, like, I got influencer vibes from Kat Dunn, and she's retroactively my favorite. So she wasn't my favorite on BB-21, but she's my favorite from BB-21 now. But she was one of my favorites on BB-21. But, uh, but yeah, she made it interesting, like the influencer type. So, like, that's what I think Alyssa needs to live up to in terms of entertainment value. But I did read how she plans to strategize, and, like, if it goes the right way, it could be interesting. Hold on, let me... I should probably have brought up the uh, the actual bios that I read. <laughs> Give me a second. <sighs> 
My phone has decided to be slow today because it knows I'm streaming and trying to do something. Why didn't I do this beforehand? So she says she expects house guests to be drawn to her and reveal their secrets so she can build trust. Now, if she does do that the right way, like there's a right way and a wrong way to do that kind of plan. And if she does it right, she could be a very interesting player. But honestly, like I look at her and I just see big alliance, probably a showmance. And like, I just, I don't know. I don't get the best vibes from her. Well, she does say, okay, she's the one that said, Align with powerful people, but make a final two with someone outside of the Alliance. So, I guess that could work, possibly, but, you know, it, it's all about execution. And just, I don't know, my gut tells me that it's not going to go the way she's saying she wants it to go. So that's that's my concern with Alyssa. I think... Uh, You gotta be kidding me. <sighs> this phone is too old for me to do this stuff. <laughs> so yeah, my thoughts on Alyssa are just kind of... Mm, there's a lot of hype around her. Like She seems like a pretty popular one in the fan base so far, but I'm just... I'm not feeling it. She could prove me wrong. I, I reserve the right to change my opinions about any of these people at any time. But yeah, that's that's just my initial thoughts on Alyssa. Moving on now to Aza. Aza? Aza? I'm not sure of the exact pronunciation yet, but I will get it right as soon as I hear her say it. Um, she definitely caught my eye, and she has caught a lot of people's eyes. By saying that she hates showmances. And she would like keep an eye out for threats. And like the impression I got is that she would go after the, the big players. So Yeah, she says break up the power couples and eliminate strong players early in the game. So I think I'm going to say Azah for now. Azah winning power early on would be fantastic because I think she has the potential to really shake things up in that house. But my concern is, and I hate to say this, but I feel like if she doesn't win power, I feel like she'll be targeted early. I don't want that to happen. I want to make that perfectly clear. I, I like her. I think she has potential. But, uh... I don't know, just... The way that players like her go is that they go in saying they're going to go after the big people. The big threats. But then they never get the chance to do so. Like how last season, David said he was going to target Cody in Memphis if he ever won HOH. But of course he never did. But, um, Azah says that, well, she says, like, her favorite moment is Keisha's birthday from BB10. So that says she's been watching for a while, which is good. I want as many old school viewers as there can be. Sorry, I didn't mean to punch my mic, but there's only one person here so far. So, you know, but if you're watching this on YouTube, then I apologize. And she says she's going to play for herself and not the house. And honestly, thank you. Because when you play for the house, you're just, you're not, when you're doing what the house wants, you're doing what one person wants. You're doing what the person at the top of the house wants. And you're helping their game, not yours. So that is really a big brother tactic that needs to go away. 
okay? It really, really, truly does. Stop being afraid. Like, votes are anonymous. No one can prove anything. Just vote how you see fit. So. So I trust Azar to... to do... to do what she wants, what she thinks is best. And I think that will work out for her. And now, next up, we have Brent. And, uh... <laughs> First of all, he is from Cranston, Rhode Island, and I am from Massachusetts, so he is the closest contestant to me of the season. And I took one look at this guy, and I'm like, he is destined for the big alliance. He, he is probably going to be in a bromance and a showmance. And I think he is probably going to go pretty far in the game. For better or worse. Probably worse. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just... I look at him and I don't see a particularly interesting player. Give me a second... When he was asked about his favorite moment on Big Brother, he uh, he couldn't really give a specific moment. He just talked about how he loves seeing people get backdoored. And that has led some people to suspect that he might be just a recruit, and he hasn't watched too much of the show before, if any. And it's just, I don't know. He says that he's going to be a, a social threat, and honestly, I can see that. I feel like even if someone who is not aligned with him wins power, I feel like they won't target him. Even though odds are they probably should do that. And yeah, it's just, I don't know. I think, I think Brent is going to be part of, if not the leader of, a big alliance. And. And yeah. I just. I'm just kind of. Not interested. But who knows. Again. Could surprise me. You never can tell. Next up is someone who has. Uh, already gotten. A lot of. Uh. A lot of cringe buzz, Brittany, for her uh, her dancing TikToks, and you know it's like just let the girl dance. You know, she looks like she's having fun. She's not hurting anybody, so you know, maybe just let her have some fun. She says she's going to be authentic, be herself, and, uh, you know, it could work. Like, she could do well with the social game. But here's what I think. I think she might try to come off as Nicole Anthony, like the Nicole we saw in BB21, not 22. That Those they may have been the same person, but they were two different players. Let's just get that clear. I think she might try to be like how Nicole was in BB21, but I think there is a possibility she might come off more grating than charming. Like, I know that I don't have any illusions about Nicole as a, a physical player. She, uh, I mean, it took her until double eviction night when there were six people left to finally win anything. But her, her strength was the social game. 
And that is a very important factor in Big Brother. But uh, I don't know if Brittany is going to be able to pull it off like Nicole did in 21. So if I had to guess, I think Brittany is going to go early. Pre-jury for sure. I get this chair keeps falling out on me. I've said before, it's an old chair. Sometimes it just kind of drops down on me. So if you ever see me just like that, then, then that's what happens. Next up is Christian. Now this guy. There is some buzz around him because there was a guy named Garrett in the initial leak of contestants. And then the official cast dropped and Garrett was nowhere to be seen. And then suddenly there was this dude, Christian. And that leaves a lot of questions. What happened to Garrett? Why did they drop him? But we have Christian now. And, like, I I looked at him, I looked at his bio, tried to get a read on him. And he seems like very much like a, like a bro type of guy. It says he wants to play a little clueless, align with everyone, and swoop in. Now, that leaves two possibilities for him. He could either end up like Tyler, or he could end up like Jace on BB-17. Like Tyler and Jace were basically the same person. But Tyler actually won himself power early on, and was able to establish himself as a player and make connections. Jace did not do that. Like, he made friends with one person, and then he went streaking in the house, and then everyone was like, we don't like this guy. Let's just get him out. And I believe he was voted out unanimously. I'll have to double-check that one. But, uh... But, yeah, like... <laughs> Christian, I think it could go either way for him. I feel like if he does manage to work his way into the Power Alliance, he could stick around for a while. I don't really see a showman for him. I just feel like he'd be too, like, too chill to win over anybody. But yeah, I think, uh, if I'm being honest, Christian is also maybe a little like Memphis. Memphis was picked at the last second, and there was just nothing positive about him. And like, I don't think Christian will be as bad as Memphis was, but he might just be boring. That's how I feel about, about Christian. So moving on now to Christy. And yes, when I heard that name, Christy, my guard went up a little like, oh god, not another Christy. I hated Christy so much on BB21. I hated her. She annoyed me from day one, and then she lasted for a really long time. And I was just like, I've had enough. Now, that being said about this Christy, I don't feel as though she will be as annoying. But I also don't feel as though she's going to go as far. Because reading her bio, like she was talking about how like her favorite um, moment was Haley revealing that she was the hacker to try to help Bailey. And her favorite duo was Derek and Cody because she liked how loyal they were to each other. Now, like, Haley revealing the hacker did not really help much. Like, it, it did kind of put a bit of a target on her. And Derek and Cody 
were just running the game and completely sucked out all the entertainment from Big Brother as we know it. I mean, it's honestly, I've never even known pre Derek and Cody. I've never watched a season from before their style of gameplay. But she just sees the loyalty there. So, like, she's seeing the positives in these things that were not, that, like, have problems to them. And I'm wondering if maybe this level of positivity will work against her in the game. Because maybe, like, I don't know. I feel like she might trust the wrong people. She might see too many positives in certain people that aren't looking out for her best interests. And, uh, and yeah, I just, I don't think that she's going to go especially far. I think, if I had to guess, I think Christy is going to be an early juror. I think she might just scrape into the jury stage, but she won't go too much farther than that. She'll be juror one or two. That is, that is my guess for Christy. As far as if I'm going to like her as a person, I don't know. Maybe. It's possible. I just think she might, uh, she might not be able to keep up with the intensity of the house. So, moving on now, we have got Derek F., which is Derek Frazier, the son of legendary boxer Joe Frazier. I, uh... I told that to my dad, that Joe Frazier's son is going to be on this season of Big Brother. And right away, my dad was like, he's my guy. I pick him. I pick him to win. So. So that, that didn't surprise me too much. He, he watches boxing sometimes. And, like, he was around in the 70s. Muhammad Ali versus Joe Frazier. That, those are, like, the most iconic boxing matches of all time. And Joe Frazier, in the first fight, he and Muhammad Ali fought three times. Joe Frazier beat Muhammad Ali the first time, and then Muhammad Ali won the next two. But still, he beat Muhammad Ali. That is not nothing. Now, Derek F. says that he he's good at making personal relationships, and he can, you know, make connections with people. He'll try to get everyone to do his dirty work. And, you know, if he can do that, then, yeah, he will go pretty far. But I don't know if he'll be able to pull it off. Like, we shall see. We'll see how how willing the others are to uh, put up with him. I mean, elephant in the room. I'll say it. The big alliances on Big Brother historically target people of color early. And there are enough white people in this game this season to form a big alliance and get them out. But it it's not going to be like it's only half the house. So, you know, if I feel like if another person of color wins power, I don't think they would put up Derek Frazier. That would be my guess. They wouldn't go for him until later in the game. But, uh, yeah, it's just, like, I I still can't help but worry that, that the black people will be the first ones out. I, I hate thinking that. I hate being worried about that, but I'm just going off history. The... The thing about last season, if there is one positive for it, it's that it did have the highest placing black person I have seen in my time watching the show, which was David coming in eighth place. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. We'll see if, uh, you know, with the influencer vibes, maybe if Derek Frazier says that his dad was a famous boxer, maybe that will win him some uh, friends among the more uh, fame-hungry elements of the cast. Uh, 
had to fix my hair with my the top of my headset. Chair just fell on me again. Pardon me. Oh yeah. Forgot to mention, I'm sure you noticed by now, but I got Heisenberg because Breaking Bad, greatest show of all time. Now, Derek F. is not the only Derek this season. We have got a Derek X. You don't hear X often for an initial, but hey, good for him. Derek Zhao, I think. I think that's how it's pronounced. X-I-A-O. And, uh, I really enjoyed his, uh, his strategy. I'm gonna read this word for word. Build relationships with everyone in the house and slowly turn friendships into alliances and then layer in unassailable logical reasoning to influence people's decisions. Now, if he is able to dumb that down, like dumb down the way he talks, <laughs> he could be able to influence people, but like if he just talks in big words all the time, I feel like he's going to become a target. And I don't want that because I kind of like him. He gives me good vibes. I think, uh, I mean, look, if he is as influential with his logical reasoning as he says he is then he might go far but like I I can't help but get some OV vibes you know the, the kind of nerd that goes early instead of Ian vibes the kind that goes far so I'm just wondering uh like, he, he could, I'd say Derek X has an equal shot of, as equal a shot of winning as he does of being the first move. Yeah. In fact, I think winning or first boot are the, are like the two most likely outcomes for him. And then second through 15th place are just like the odds of all of those are lower. <laughs> like, is that a weird prediction? Because that's just, that's just what I think. But, you know, we'll see if, uh, we'll see if he's the, the master manipulator he says that he is. Now, he says that he is, um, what's his job? It's a startup founder. So, like, he's able to get businesses going. But, of course, to do that, you need money. So that tells me that he is good at at least influencing people to give him money to start businesses. So... You know, it could work. If he can translate those skills the right way into the Big Brother house, he could go far. Now, next up, we have got Frenchie. And uh, I have heard a lot of conflicting stories about this guy. Like, apparently he is somewhat known on Big Brother Twitter. I have not heard of him. But, like, some people know him, and... There have been accusations that he has bullied and even, in some cases, sexually harassed um, some other fans of the show. Now, I'm not saying he did or did not do it. All I'm saying is, like, I've seen the... I've seen people accuse him, but none of them have shared, like, the messages... So I, I don't want to, like, I, it's not that I don't believe victims, like, as a rule, I tend to, but, you know, sometimes, like, it does kind of not entirely add up all the time, and, like, there are ways that they could better prove their case sometimes, and they just don't. So if... If someone comes forward with more solid proof on Frenchie, by all means, I'm done with him. I'm not going to give him the time of day. As is, I'm I'm hesitant about him, but I'm not ready to just, like, sign a petition to get him kicked off the show either. Like, I'm somewhere in between.
Now, as for his uh, his gameplay strategies, uh, he does feel that big strategies are overrated, which is music to my ears because, like, I did not enjoy how the big super alliance got together right at the beginning and. It's heavily rumored before the beginning of last season. They teamed up, and then they all just went their separate ways. They just named their alliance and then just did their own thing. Like, they're... Like, yeah, they were loyal to each other, but they weren't, like... There wasn't, like... I don't know. It just didn't feel like they were a real, true unit. It was like they were put together. By Derek. From BB-16. So yeah, I don't really enjoy when big alliances get together like that. I mean, in uh in BB20 level 6, they were like they felt more like a like a true squad. Whereas they felt like friends, the big alliance last season, they just felt like co-workers. And it's like this is boring. But yeah, he says set strategies are overrated and they crumble. And he feels that his lifestyle fits perfectly in the Big Brother house because he's a farmer and he says day to day you never know what to expect. So, you know, like, he could end up uh, being in everybody's good graces and I think he might go far. But uh, again, if anyone, like, shares the receipts about how he mistreated or harassed them instead of just saying he did like if they show actual if they show the messages like, oh, no you'll be at the the bottom of the daily poll for me when i i did it for the first time yesterday the daily poll and uh i i believe i put frenchy fourth from the bottom just because with everything i wasn't sure what to make of him so i just i couldn't really make a fair opinion so i just I put him below the people I did have an opinion on, and then I put him above the people that I had a negative opinion on, and including Brent. But uh, there's more, of course. Next up, we have Hannah. Now, this is someone else who has... Uh, gotten a lot of hype a lot of positive hype and uh i remember reading her bio and and i was reminded of vanessa from bb17 and i'm watching bb17 now and vanessa is my favorite like vanessa is the kind of like messy manipulative cutthroat big brother player that i can root for because she just does it so well. Like, most people, they just, they do it, and it's just, like, they do it in such a toxic, unlikable way. But Vanessa, she just has this this chess master charm to her. Sorry, I just had to had to find the right uh, section. But yeah, Hannah says she's gonna learn everyone's strengths and weaknesses, and she's gonna. She says she'll bathe in people's blood, but do it in a such a tactful way that the other house guests don't realize what's happening. I, I like her. I think I'm really going to be a fan of Hannah's gameplay for as long as she's there, which I hope, honestly, is for a long time. She is she is near or maybe even at the top for me. She's up there. Like, I forget who I put as my number one in the daily poll. I, I think it actually might have been Hannah. <laughs> but yeah, I think... Uh, 
I think she's going to be good. Like I said, strong Vanessa Russo vibes. If she can play as well as her. Like, Christy, I hate to bring her up again, but Christy from BB21. Like, the first time, because I hadn't watched BB17 before, the first time I really came to know who Vanessa was, was when Christy was playing, and a lot of people were negatively comparing her to Vanessa's style of gameplay and watching BB-17. Now I get why people were making that connection. Well, it's kind of a connection, but, like, Christy's, like, an inferior knockoff generic brand version of Vanessa's gameplay. And it just didn't work for anybody. That's why no one liked Christy. <clears throat> All right. Next up, we have Kyland. Now, he has a bold strategy. He wants to combine the games of four different winners. Okay. He wants to. Hold on. Let me let me get it up real quick. I believe it was the. I believe he said Derek. Cody, Dan, and Casey. Cool, the part of the page I need is the part that won't load. There it is. Yes, okay. Combine the subtle influence of Derek with Cody's charm, Dan's strategic thinking, and hold back on showing how good I am at competitions until I have to. Hopefully not needed until the end, like Casey. Now, that is Bolt. Like, one guy to come in, and he's saying that he is going to combine four different winners' skills. And that's like going into a cooking competition and saying, like, I'm just going to be like... Like, if you go on MasterChef and you say you're just going to combine the skills of all the judges, like, you're talking a big game. Because a lot of people look up to these players. If I'm being honest... I don't so much, just because I've gotten to know them, and I'm just not impressed by their personalities. But, like, their gameplay, from what I've heard, was, like, decent. I mean, Cody and Casey are the ones whose gameplay I've actually seen. And I'm like, yeah, it's impressive, but, like, I don't care about these people. And when I say impressive, I mean, Cody had one good move, taking out Nicole Franzel at the end. That was the one good move he made. It was the one move anybody in that Super Alliance made all season. So that's why he deserved the win. That and that alone. But, you know, if if Kylans can pull that off, if he can actually combine their gameplay that well, I mean if he if he's as good as he says he can be, he might go down in Big Brother history. I don't really know what to make of him. Like, some of them, I can get a feel for where they're going to finish him. I don't know. I'd like to say I think he's going to at least make jury. But I don't know if, uh, like, if if his plans don't work out, then, you know, he might get targeted pretty, pretty fast. Dang it. Oh my god. Okay, so my internet is being weird on my phone, so I gotta reopen that page. <sighs> Sorry. Okay, but the, the next, because I, I do still have them written in my in my memo as well, from some of my notes. Uh, next up we have Sarah. Now, she says she is a, a forensic scientist, I think, was her, uh, her profession, if I'm not mistaken.
Yep, forensic scientist. So she says she likes manga and anime, so that tells me, and plus being a scientist, that tells me that she might be another lovable, nerdy girl type. And I, I feel like that might be the angle Brittany tries to go for, but I feel like Sarah's going to pull it off a little better. And, like, there's not a lot of buzz around her. Like, everyone's just kind of like, eh, with her. I mean, she's just kind of basic to people, but I, I have a good feeling about Sarah. I feel like she's going to do better with the social game. She plans to float, and you know that that is a very controversial topic. Some people approve of it, some people disapprove. But you know, you do it right, then you know, if it gets you to the end, then then it works. Wants to make everyone feel wants to make everyone feel at ease and convince them she's not threatening. So. I think I think Sarah has a better chance to play the social game that Nicole played in BB21. And I feel like you know, she may not have a lot of buzz right now, but I think she could win people over. Like I remember on the daily polls at the beginning of BB21, Nicole was at or near the bottom. Like sometimes literally last place. But then after a while she started like her social game stepped up her charm and lovability came through and she shot to the top and by the end was America's favorite and rightfully so. So so I feel like Sarah has more potential to go that route than Brittany. But I feel like her and Brittany might end up being friends in the house. But I feel like Brittany might go early and like Sarah will be casting her vote to evict, and she'll evict Brittany, but she'll be sad about it. So yeah, I think uh, I think Sarah's gonna surprise a few people. But that's just that's my guess, and I hope she does. Because you know, as I've said many many times, I love my nerdy girls. All right, up next. We have got Tiffany. She is the oldest of the season. And by old, I mean 40. Like, can... I don't like that the oldest person of the season was born in the 1980s. Okay? She was born in 1981 or 1980. Okay? Like, my dad has, has jackets that are older than that. <laughs> So, like, just bring in some more 50-year-olds. Bring in a 60-year-old again. Like, I know about Jerry, 75, came in third place. Like, they can do it. Let me see what Tiffany said in her bio. And she plans to keep quiet and observe She says she has an alter ego, which sounds interesting, but uh, I uh, I guess it depends on if that alter ego is someone that, uh, like, like, you know how, like, as much as I've been enjoying BB-17, Davon was done really dirty, and they ganged up on her for nothing. Like, it was Clay was like, your attitude is just not good. And I'm like, neither is yours, you freaking redneck. And I just feel like maybe Tiffany's alter ego is going to rub people the wrong way. And that is wrong. Like, it, it's hard to explain, but it's just like, it feels like Certain white people think that black people have a certain attitude, and they find it threatening no matter what they do. Like, Davon walked into a room, and Clay was like, ooh, I don't like her anymore. And he 
asked her about it, and she explains it, and she's like, your attitude. I hated Clay. I'm so happy he didn't make jury. So happy Shelly did, and he didn't. It's what they deserved. But, uh, I feel like even if Tiffany's alter ego is not, like, someone that would rub people the wrong way, I feel like her just keeping quiet and observing might make her an easy target, and plus the fact that she's the oldest. I feel like she might, I compared her to Steve before, like, the the oldest, but they're the same age at the time they're on. I'm just, I'm worried she's going to be an easy target. And I don't, uh, I don't know. A lot of people already like her. And I don't dislike her. But I admit, I didn't get much from her from her bio. Like, some of them have really long answers. Hers are pretty short. Like, her, her strategy is one sentence. It takes up three lines. My strategy for winning the game is to learn as much as I can about everyone else and keep my mouth shut. Like, that's kind of a safe, cliche answer. Don't you think? I mean, look, I it sounds like I'm not a fan of Tiffany. I, I have nothing against her. I, I'm sure I'll probably like her personality when I really get to meet her. But she just doesn't scream strong player to me. You know? But I could be wrong. Again, this is all speculation. This is just me looking at their pictures and reading their bios. I could be wrong about every single person so far. But um, the next guy is someone that I'm pretty confident that I have accurate. Someone that a lot of people think they have accurate. Travis. Now, the showrunner, Grodner, Grodner, whatever, um, she always has her favorites. And they're like boring, basic white guys. Big muscle heads that she just fantasizes about, probably. And Travis is clearly hers. There's no doubt in my mind. He's this season's Tyler. And like he says that his favorite duo on the show is Brett and Winston. Two guys that have a combined one win between them and like they weren't one of them went out immediately like Winston was the third one out and then Brett went out because like level six was just like nah like, he tried to turn on level six they found out about it and and then they got him out so like they weren't good players. He obviously only likes them because they're they're dude bros. And Travis is going to be a dude bro. And he and Brent are going to be in the bromance of the season. And Travis, he's just, he's the kind of guy, that, he's going to start the big alliance. And he's going to bring in a few people that he, like, on-site trusts. He doesn't even bother getting to know them because he just knows that these people are not going to go against him. He's just going to run the season. And honestly, I'll say it, I think he's going to win. I don't want him to, but I think he's going to. And, like, people have found some problematic things about him, like eyebrow-raising stuff on social media. Pardon me. Fixing my hair again. Uh, and one thing people found is that he was in a video that's on Barstool Sports. Now, I've mentioned before, trying to get into stand-up comedy. And I've been to a few comedy shows in my time. And let me just put it into comedy terms. Like, what I think Barstool is like and how... I therefore think Travis is like. Like, sometimes when you go to a, a comedy show or an open mic, there is this group of comedy bros that show up 
and they don't pay attention to anyone outside their little clique that's performing. They're just talking to each other the whole show, and they're laughing at each other, just making a nuisance, not listening to anything that's happening around them. And then when one of them goes on stage to perform, they're the only ones laughing. No one else is laughing along. It's just their dude bro buddies. And Travis appeared. It was probably a, a skit, but he was like a, a male thought, T-H-O-T. -T. And it was probably a parody video, but like, it was not good. It was, it was garbage. It was not funny. It was annoying. And it's exactly the kind of crappy dude bro humor that Barstool is known for and that I don't respect. And which is why I have Barstool blocked on social media. So, yeah, that that tells me that Travis is going to be the kind of guy that only his bros will think is funny and cool. No one else will. So yeah, I I don't I don't like I don't like Travis. I get not good vibes from him. If he actually wins me over, I will be very surprised. Speaking of people who don't give me good vibes, next up we have Whitney. And uh hold on. So I got influencer vibes from her as well, like Alyssa. Like, the influencer vibes I get from Whitney are of the mom influencer variety, which are their own brand of annoying. I feel like she is going to be chosen for the big alliance just, uh, just based on looks alone. I don't feel she's going to have any real game strategy. Any real tactics? And uh, people have found out that she's got like a... Her, her TikTok... There's a lot of people with TikTok accounts this season. Like that's the, the social media of choice this season. Her TikTok is just makeup and guns. And I'm like, really? I'm just not interested in any of what she's bringing to the table. Okay? I'm just not. She says she's going to be a strong competitor, but not make too many ripples. Now, why do I feel like she is going to start a lot of fights with some of the other women in the house? That's my guess. She's going to gang up with all the guys and maybe one of the women. She says she wants to uphold her values. Now, you know what that says to me? Anti-vaxxer. Just, like, it, you, you know, your values, you can just have those and do no work on them. And you just say what you believe. You don't have to actually learn anything. And it's just, Whitney is going to be a problem. Okay? And I think her and Travis are going to work together. In fact, I think Whitney and Brent are going to get into a showmance. And I think Travis and Alyssa might get into a showmance. And I think they will also bring uh, Christian in, and maybe Frenchie, if they decide to bring in an older guy. Christy also is a possibility. Depends on how freaked out they are by a bald woman. I don't know. They seem like the kind of superficial types that wouldn't really like that too much. But yeah, Whitney, just... I don't... I don't get good vibes from her. Travis was my dead last on the on the daily poll, and Whitney was second to last. And like I said, Brent was third to last. I just I feel like at best Whitney is going to end up as Annalise 2.0. She's just gonna get invited into the big alliance, do nothing of value be extremely unlikable all season long and then 
and then boringly end up like at best in the middle or maybe like if it does get down to just the big alliance left she'll probably be the first one to go and finally we have Xavier I like this guy this guy gives me good vibes. He's someone that I think I'm going to really want to root for. Now, he's an attorney. And uh, let's bring up BB-17 again. Vanessa at least went to law school. I don't know if she was or is now officially a lawyer. But, I mean, her, her profession was poker player. But, like, Vanessa had those good reads on people. She knew how to how to talk her way into making people do certain things. And if Xavier can do that, then I think he could end up being like the male Vanessa, which would be pretty cool, I think. He says his strategy for winning the game is only winning when he has to. And making genuine connections and friendships with people. Now, if he can work his way into a, a big alliance, I think that he could go far. But if the big alliance decides that he's going to be too much of a threat, I'm worried he might go early. But uh, like if he's if he's able to win power or get into a good alliance early on. He could go far. I really think he's he's got a lot of potential, but it just all comes down to, you know, what biases other people might have. Like, if people look at him and decide he's going to be a threat or someone they want to work with. And that's what it all comes down to at the end of the day. Like, like how in BB-21... Mickey won camp counselor right away, and he decided David was a physical threat. But he didn't he didn't team up with Sam right away, but he thinks David is gonna be a, a physical threat, even though Sam was much bigger and more muscular than David. I'm like, really? It just I've I've said before how problematic that was, like that camp counselor thing. Like just from the concept of it, it was not good. And then Mickey proceeds, to, excuse me, proceeds to nominate the two black people, the Latina and the old guy. I've got the hiccups now. So I really hope Xavier doesn't get screwed over right away because I think, uh, I think he might just be my guy for this season. But then again, David was my guy going into BB-21. And we all know how that ended for him. Now, I did uh, make one more note in my phone. Uh, predictions for who I think will be the, the biggest flop and the biggest surprise. And I kind of hinted at both while I was talking. So if you were paying attention, you may know. That I think the biggest surprise is going to be Sarah. I think she's going to be charming and likable. And I think she's going to win a lot of people over. And the biggest flop I think is going to be Alyssa. Because I think she's going to be in the big alliance. And she's just going to you know, get close with the guys. And one or two women. And, and just help dominate everything. Also, I would not be surprised if Alyssa doesn't win much or anything. So, yeah. Uh, that's what I think. So I think about everything. Uh, you know, it's all s speculative now. I could be totally wrong about everybody. Like, every vibe I have could be incorrect. Like, for all I know, it could turn out that Travis is the most likable guy in there. I don't think the odds of that are too high, but it's possible. You never can't tell, really. 
I will say that at the moment, I'm not happy that the first person on this cast whose voice I heard was Travis, because I watched part of that Barstool Sports thing that he did, and, like, ugh, I cringed so hard. Whether it's real or not, I don't care. It was still cringe. Everything Barstool does is cringe. But yes, those are my thoughts. And I will say that this cast has given me some hope that this season might not go the way it usually goes. Like, I think there are a couple of people this season that might not get invited into the Super Alliance that could win power and and shake up the game and make it something that we haven't seen like seven or eight years in a row now. That's just, that's what I think. And I am excited, and I can't wait for this new season to start, and I'm sure the interviews will be dropping soon, the pre-show interviews. I'm ready. I am ready for BB23. This cast, uh, I think it'll be interesting, for sure. But uh, that'll do it for this video. I'm butt uh -ing a lot. <laughs> So, that'll do it. Thank you for watching. I have been Drake Bellick, or if you're watching this on YouTube, I have been Nick Grimes. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.